the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, June 17, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, police violence against Americans is ignored by the government. But border control agents get new restrictions on using force on illegal immigrants. And more evidence our government runs a terrorist with ISIS being secretly trained by the United States for years. Then the transgenic modification of honeybees begins. What could possibly go wrong? All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, we've got a constant stream of illegals flooding the border in the Rio Grande region. Border agents report not being able to do their job. They're totally overwhelmed because they're too busy changing dirty diapers. They can't patrol the border. And now agents have even more restrictions placed upon them. Uh, the U.S. Border Patrol is going to be putting in place new policies to restrict the use of force by agents. Under the new restrictions, Border Patrol agents will be required to avoid situations where deadly force may be used. Examples include refraining from blocking moving vehicles' paths or firing at rock throwers unless they're in imminent danger. These agents will additionally be trained on how to carry and use lighter weapons while also facing restrictions on taser use. So Border Patrol agents are saying that their lives are literally being put in danger every single day, and now they're being used as pawns in a political game. Now, these policies were likely prompted after what was uh, called a scathing review by the LA Times, saying that the agents were using deadly force on children who were throwing rocks at them. But as Breitbart points out, in April, rocks can be very deadly. They show pictures here of just how harmless rock throwing can actually be. Um, of course, this is ridiculous because if you were anywhere else in the country, throwing big boulders and splitting open cops' heads and busting their car windows and stuff, of course, cops are gonna be using uh, deadly force. But here at the border, they're being told to just back off. And if there are cars rushing the border, just back off. Just let them come through. If the rock throwers are coming, just, you know, don't even use your taser on those people. Meanwhile, here in America, this is how the cops treat American citizens. Um, this is a cop throwing a 19-year-old woman to the ground and then punching her in the stomach. This attack occurred on Sunday at Pittsburgh's Pride in the Street Festival. Now, the cop said in his compl uh, police complaint, that he punched Ariel Lothar in the abdomen several times to distract her enough so that he could handcuff her. Now, <laughs> the cops are not punching any of those illegal aliens in the gut to try and distract them from jumping over the border. You know, nope, they're gonna reserve that deadly force or use of force for girls in rainbow socks at the Gay Pride Festival. So this is basically how you're getting treated here in the streets of America, while people who are breaching the border illegally are getting the VIP treatment, and in fact, now they're even being given the right to vote in addition to all of those welfare benefits, at least, you know, if that's uh, what this one Democratic senator, if he gets his way. This is a new legislative proposal from Democratic Senator Gustavo Rivera of New York. Um, Basically, this is just proving what everyone has been really complaining about this whole time, saying this influx of illegals will be used to dilute the libertarian and conservative voter bloc, as well as the increase, uh, the burden it's going to have on government spending. Well, here, Rivera says the main objective of the New York is Home Act will give illegal immigrants the right to vote, but it also establishes a kind of second-tiered citizenship on a state level in which illegal immigrants can apply for tuition assistance, health insurance, and drivers and professional licenses, among other benefits. Now, of course, the chances of this going through are slim, but it reveals the end game for Democrats, of course, because amid all of the failures, Democrats must offset their losses at the voter base. Now, to quote Franklin D. Roosevelt, this article quotes him saying, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Now, of course, we know that it's been planned that way because we've been reporting about how FEMA has been making requests for the supplies to take care of all of these illegal aliens for more than a year now. So, of course, 
<laughs> nothing happens by accident in politics. Now, Friday, Alex Jones reported on Iraq and really kind of brought it all together and how these ISIS soldiers were trained by the West, uh, you know, just like Al Qaeda. Well, now World Net Daily is reporting on that in further t detail, more specifically saying members of ISIS were trained in 2012 by U.S. instructors working at a secret base in Jordan. According to Jordanian officials, dozens of ISIS members were trained at the time as part of covert aid to the insurgents targeting the Assad regime in Syria. Now, supposedly, all ISIS members were vetted for any links to al-Qaeda and other extremist groups. I wonder what that vetting looked like. Oh, are you an extremist? No. Okay, good. You're in. We need you here on our al-Qaeda team. Now, we've been reporting. They've backed and they've trained the Syrian rebels. They trained and backed the opposition in Ukraine. They trained and backed al-Qaeda. I mean, you would think that they would have learned by now that they don't want to be sharing this expertise with extremists unless, of course, they want the weapons to fall in the wrong hands. Now, Alex Jones predicted this very thing was going to be happening. When, quote, government screwed up in the past or in any other country for that matter, the people responsible for it resign or go to jail. But nowadays, the answer is give us more funding. And, and that's what Hillary Clinton said. That's why whenever FEMA ordered the police to stand down during Katrina on Bush's uh, watch, FEMA then got even more funding saying we need more power. They've engineered that into the system. It's just an amazing level uh, of corruption. But you see, watching the Senate hearings with Hillary, only part of it is being covered. Because our government armed the Libyan Al-Qaeda rebels out of Saudi Arabia, who first came from Saudi Arabia and other countries, into Benghazi two years ago to destabilize and take down Libya. They were on the BBC saying, next stop, Damascus, Syria. They've been there. They've been given heat-seeking missiles. Some numbers are as high as 15,000. Most numbers are around 12,000. 10,000 of those heat-seekers, pretty high-tech. Take down any jet airliner you want. They've been attacking jet airliners, shooting them up. Passenger liners. And then the media thinks you're so stupid, they go, we have to give our rights up and invade all over Africa and Algeria and Mali because Al-Qaeda's there. And then our criminal occupied government uses that as a pretext with NATO and France to invade Mali and Algeria and other areas. I mean, it's amazing. We predicted four years ago in the Obama deception, they would use Al-Qaeda that they control to invade all over Africa because we know how they operate. And we saw the buildup of AFRICON. Breaking tonight, a troubling report on the terror group now in control of a third of Iraq. Today, we learned that the same group may now be in possession of a deadly cache of American-made firepower, Stinger missiles. They are powerful enough to take down a commercial airliner. An explosion triggered a fire at a major gas pipeline today. This was uh, in the Ukraine, and it's the largest consumer gas pipeline serving Europe through the Ukraine, stretching 2,800 miles out of Siberia. Now, according to witnesses, flames from the ruptured pipeline reached 200 meters high. It's still not clear if the explosion was an accident or deliberate. But of course, this incident follows just on the heels of Russian energy company Gazprom cutting off gas supplies on Monday. This was uh, in response to Ukraine missing some payments. They said an installment of nearly $2 billion was due for past deliveries. Now, this isn't the first suspicious rupture of the pipeline. Another was reported in May, with experts reportedly finding evidence of remotely controlled explosives at that site. Now, the pipeline was constructed during the Soviet era and was considered a threat to the hegemony of Western oil interests. But of course, this is all suspiciously timed because not only did Russia just cut off the gas supply to the Ukraine, but earlier this year, Ukrainian radicals threatened to blow up the pipeline from Russia. But also suspicious, you know, the Ukraine is going to be just fine because don't forget, Joe Biden's son is now on the board of Ukraine's largest gas producer, Burisma Holdings. So I'm sure that somebody there is going to step up to replenish the supply to Europe. 
Well, the IRS says it's lost even more emails. Now it's not just Lois Lerner's emails that are missing, but they say six more employees that are involved in the targeting of the conservative groups, they can't produce the emails from those employees either. Now this news has, of course, further inflamed the Republicans who are investigating the scandal um, because the IRS has known for months that it wouldn't be able to produce these emails that it says were lost in a computer crash. Now, they, they were charged in a statement that the IRS is attempting to cover up the fact that it conveniently lost key documents in the investigation. Well, of course they lost these key documents because what do they prove? Well, they show that in the final weeks of the campaign season, the Obama IRS worked with the FBI to advance a scheme to criminally prosecute conservative organizations. Now, Judicial Watch has been vital in uh, uncovering these documents through their FOIA requests, basically busting this IRS scandal wide open. Now, the emails show that IRS officials, including the former head of tax-exempt groups, Lois Lerner, discussing the possibility of bringing criminal charges against Tea Party groups for engaging in political activity. Didn't know that was a crime. Now, in fact, the document showed Lerner wanted to make an example out of someone with charges in order to chill all of the groups in the Tea Party movement. Now, this is in addition to the release that showed that Lerner had a database of tax-exempt organizations sent to the FBI just before the 2010 midterm elections. Now, it's been reported that that database included legally protected taxpayer information. Now, emails show Lerner and DOJ election crimes branch official Richard Pilger discuss what format the FBI prefers when it comes to receiving information for this investigation. It says, thanks, Lois. FBI says raw format is best because they can put it right into their systems like Excel. Now, this was in a 2010 email that Pilger wrote to Lerner. Now, this revelation likely means that the IRS, including possibly Lois Lerner, violated federal tax law by transmitting this information to the Justice Department in 2010. So it just keeps getting worse for this administration, but of course that's what happens when it is rotten to the core. And what did Lois Lerner have to say about these supposed computer crash that deleted all these files, she said, sometimes things just happen, you know? And that's exactly what I'm gonna tell the IRS agent who calls me uh, this next tax season wanting to know where all of my documents are, and I'm gonna say, well, they got lost in a computer crash, man. I don't know, things just happen, you know? Let's see if that flies. But of course, I'm just a lowly American citizen. I don't work for the goons at the IRS, so I'll probably be thrown in prison if I try to say, some things just happen, you know? Now the House says it's gonna be punishing the IRS with a 15% cut to their budget. Uh, it's about 1.5 billion less than what Obama had asked for. Now they say the goal is to keep the tax agency focused on its core duties and eliminate efforts to judge the political activities of tax exempt groups and break its implementation of Obamacare. The House Appropriations Committee Chairman Hal Rogers said, the bill focuses cuts on lower priority or poor performing agencies, such as the scandal plagued and inefficient Internal Revenue Service. Total burn on his part, but of course this will never really take effect because it's not gonna pass. The, the democratically controlled Senate is not gonna continue fighting this war on behalf of the American people. Um, now coming up, the Bo Bergdahl swap is just another scandal plaguing this administration. It's raised a lot of questions, including just what did Michael Hastings know about Bo Bergdahl? Now that's coming up, and we're gonna speak with a beekeeper about a new genetically modified honeybee and what that could possibly mean for the dying off of the bee population. All that and more is coming up right after this. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere.